Well, this year was kind of an odd year as far as pictures of deer. I've actually had better bucks in Missouri this year than I have in Iowa for the most part. And because of that, I've kind of focused a lot of my attention on some of my Missouri bucks and decided I was going to spend a lot of time trying to kill one of these bucks in Missouri. Well, it was late September and one of the bucks I'd had pictures of all summer here in Missouri started showing up on a bean field. So I moved to Banks Blind in there and wasn't really sure if I had a chance of seeing him, but with the full moon and a cold front, I decided I'd go in after him and I had one of the best hunts that I've had all year on September 21st. It is September 21st and here in Missouri, I decided <clears throat> to come sit in my Banks Blind tonight. Um, we had a huge cold front come in. It's been in, up in the 90s for like the last two weeks in a row every day. The pictures have been really slow. We haven't had really anything on camera, but we had a big cold front blow in and now it's about 68 degrees today is the high. So I had my big buck on camera last night at midnight right in front of me at 50 yards. So I'm hoping he's bedded in this draw and he, with this cool weather, he's gonna get up and come and check this scrape tonight or come eat some acorns. This is kind of a weird spot, there's not much food. I'm not set up on food at least. I'm kind of just sitting in this gap where the deer walk through here. There is some soybeans behind me to the left that I could catch them walking to, but they're pretty dried up and the deer have kind of started to leave them alone. So I'm really banking on him coming to that scrape or maybe coming to eat some acorns under this big oak tree. That's at like 30 yards. So I'm pretty excited. I'm hoping maybe he's bedded to the north of me tonight and hopefully I can put my eyes on him. So. Like I said, September 21st, north wind, and it actually feels like deer season tonight, so fingers crossed, we'll see what happens. Well, as this buck was coming in, I was losing light fast. And by the time he got up to 60 yards, it was dead quiet outside and I just didn't feel like chancing that shot. So I took the chance, let him move off that uh, maybe I'd see him again here in the near future. Well, as luck would have it, that was the last daylight encounter I had with that buck. He started to become more and more irregular on the trail cameras through the end of September. I hunted hard through October, had some encounters, but just wasn't able to close the deal. But I knew as November got closer that the chances of me getting one of my big bucks in front of me were gonna go up. And on November 5th, Jimbo came to Missouri. He jumped in a tree with me and we finally had another good hunt in the Show Me State. It is November 5th, the morning of November 5th. Jim and I are back in the same tree we were in last night. We hung this set yesterday afternoon. We had a pretty slow evening, but uh, things are definitely a little different this morning and they have been the past few days. We've already seen a few bucks and they're really cruising hard this morning. So we had a three-year-old buck probably coming behind us here, a little darker this morning. But he went and cruised off and then we just had that little buck cruise by and we had another little buck back by 
I was cruising earlier this morning, so I think uh, things are starting to turn on a little bit here. So hopefully one of these big ones I've got on camera will do the same thing that one just did and we'll be in the chips. So feels good this morning. Temperatures in the 30s, south wind, and the deer are on their feet. So we'll cross our fingers, see what happens. Well, after the buck that I call Baby Blue came through and he bedded down in front of us, he got up about five minutes later and moved off. And I caught some movement down in the brush. Once I got the binoculars up, I noticed it was the big nine, one of the bucks I was after. And he was only 60 yards from us, but in some really thick brush. So you can't see him very good on the camera, but we were just hoping he was gonna come our way. Well, I had rattled, snort wheezed, and grunted at this deer, and he just didn't seem to care. We realized about five minutes later that he had a doe down there, and that explains exactly why he wasn't gonna come to the calling. We just had to get lucky and have that doe bring him past us. All right, well, shortly after, uh, that buck I called Baby Blue came through. <clears throat> he went down here and bedded right in this little chunk in front of us, and he got up and walked off. And I saw another deer moving over there, pulled up the binos, and it's the big one that we're after, the big nine. And he was coming towards us at first, and he started to turn and go down towards the bottom. So I grunted, tickled the antlers, snort wheezed. He didn't seem to care, and then he bedded down at like, oh, 90 yards. So he's been laying there for like 30 minutes, and eventually he's gonna get back up. When he gets back up, I'll break grunt at him again. But, or maybe he'll just get up and walk up here, but he definitely heard the calling, so he knows something's going on up here. But we're not positive that he doesn't have a doe down there either, because it's pretty brushy. We just may not have seen her, but we're in, a, we're in a pretty good position, I think, if he gets up and comes back this way at all. So it's nice to know he's in here, though. That's the one we're after. We'll see what he does here. And like they normally do, the doe got up and went the other way, and of course he followed. Well, one of my favorite hunts of the year is whenever my stepbrother Dylan comes down from Minnesota. This will be his third fall coming down. He killed his first buck last year, a big funky rack, mature buck here in Missouri. And I was super excited to have him down. We both killed awesome bucks at Nelson Outfitters back in September. So we were trying to keep the hot streak going and I was pumped to have him in camp.
Well, as you guys saw in one of our previous videos, Dylan actually ended up killing a really good buck, a big mature buck on one of Anson's farms, uh, a couple hours south of where we were hunting in Missouri. As Soon as we got him loaded up, we headed north. Cole had pictures of a big mature eight pointer that we were gonna go after. So as soon as we got up here, unloaded everything and headed straight to the tree. sitting on one of Cole's farms tonight and there's a handful of shooters on this place that um, they're gonna let me shoot here and most of them are just big eights big nines but I'd be perfectly happy with any of them so we're sitting right in the middle of the farm right up on top of the hill we've got a fence gap right here where the equipment goes through from one big field to another on a north wind we got the decoy out we can see probably 400 yards both ways so if we can just catch a buck cruising over the top of one of these ridges we should build a calm to us this evening so my dad killed one this morning in iowa like i said dylan killed his this morning in missouri so we're on a roll and we're hoping to keep it going tonight so november 9th it's that time of year we're just going to sit here and wait to catch one cruising or maybe call one in here after bed so feels good hopefully tonight's the night It was honestly pretty slow for most of the hunt. We saw some does, a couple young bucks, and it was about 30, 45 minutes before dark, I looked over and a big bodied deer had stepped out to our east. And as soon as he lifted his head up, I knew exactly which buck it was. Well, one of the crucial parts of this hunt is that we had the decoy out. And when I grunted at this buck, he had come up over the hill where he could see the decoy. And I don't, I think if we wouldn't have had it out, I don't think he would have came into bow range. And as soon as he saw that decoy, he was on a straight march to it. And I knew that we were gonna get a shot at him.
Well, Dylan and I got to enjoy one of the most cool scenes I've ever seen in the wild. This buck comes in from 150 yards and stops at 20. He's pawing the ground at the decoy, and this whole time he's quartered towards me, so I've just got to sit there and watch him. Another buck actually comes out to our east and is chasing does and he's staring at him forever and it was just killing my nerves watching him stand there. Finally, he turned to go back the way he came from. He was about 30 yards and uh, I knew I had to make it happen. You don't, you don't know how much of a relief that is. I've hunted so hard in Missouri. There he goes. <laughs> Dude, I've hunted so hard in Missouri. I haven't killed a deer in Missouri for like 10 years. Oh my lord. That's literally, if I had to pick a buck to shoot tonight of the ones Colt wanted me to shoot, that's the one. And I just smoked him at like 20 yards. I'm speechless. I don't even know what to say. Oh my God. He came, he came out at like 150 yards. I grunted at him. He walked all the way in here. He was putting on one of the most beautiful shows I've ever seen. He was pawing the ground. He come right to this decoy and I, it, oh God. <laughs> Are you kidding me right now? All right. Well, I want to say thanks to the old DSD that <laughs> thing is unreal they not many bucks see that thing and don't come to it and if we wouldn't have had that sitting right there we probably wouldn't have killed that deer because when I grunted at him he came up over the hill and that's what brought him the last hundred yards right there to get him in bow range so he was standing at 30 yards from the tree and there's my luminox and we already know where he where he crashed we saw him so the blood trail's not gonna be that important, but I'm gonna tell you it's gonna be an insane blood trail because he was pumping blood out. Covered in blood. Alright, well, we know where he went, so. That's where he was standing. As you can see, there's a ton of blood. And this is where he went in. We watched him fall, and there he is. Holy smoke. What a deer. Oh, yeah. That is awesome. That's a big body deer, too. Holy smoke. All right, guys, well, here he is. He didn't make it far off the edge of the field. We're only 100 yards from the tree right here, and that swacker did a number on him. He uh, stopped over here on the edge, and that was all she wrote. He tumbled down in here into the thick brush, and here he lays. So what an awesome buck. Big wraparound, massive eight-pointer. One of the bucks I was after tonight, actually. There was three or four big eights that Cole had, <clears throat> was wanting me to shoot, and this was one of them. So... We saw him come out about 150 yards from us and grunted at him once. He turned and come right to us. That decoy in that gap, he saw it from about 100 yards and walked right up there to 30. Gave me a broadside shot and the rest is history. So I can't thank the McBees enough for letting me hunt this farm. There's a lot of good bucks on it. And like I said, this is one of the ones that uh, they wanted me to shoot tonight, and I'm glad it worked out the way it did. Dylan was behind the camera. He killed a buck this morning down at Anson's farm, so 
we are on a roll guys and this is so much fun I don't even know what to say to be honest so much fun November 9th and finally I'm on the board in Missouri it's been a long time coming but this one was worth the wait